And with us right now, we've got a former NFLer and a CEO founder of Ogden Ventures, uh, author of the book, The Success Cycle and Sleepless Nights, Marcus Ogden. Thanks so much for joining us. How you doing, Josh? Thanks for having me on, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. So you are in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, beautiful part of the country. Uh, I, it's probably a part of the country. I live in Orlando, so uh, nice. I would love to spend half of the year in your neck of the woods. <laughs> Orlando's nice. I've done a lot of speaking jobs down there. Great area, good weather. Of course, you're near Disney, all that fun stuff. So yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, like, I like Orlando. Good area, good town, good people. I used yeah. to live in Jacksonville when I first got to the National Football League. They actually, they drafted me with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to ask you, yeah, tell me about a little bit about your background and of course sure. your NFL experience and, and sure. world, kind of how, how that parlayed into what you get, what you do today. So yeah, so I'm from Washington, D.C. originally. Uh, I went to St. John's College High School, the same high school as the owner of uh, Under Armour, Kevin Plank went to uh, high school, uh -huh. went to, from St. John's and went over to Howard University where my father, who played football for the Bison as well, so I got to carry on that legacy, which was amazing. <clears throat> It was just nice to be able to play in D.C. where you're from. Uh, I went to college to be a business major, finance. I wanted to work on Wall Street. My father worked in uh, D.C. for the Federal Home Loans Bank of New York in their D.C. office right by the White House downtown, 14th and K. So wow. I grew up wanting to follow my father's footsteps. I idolized him, my best friend. He was actually a single parent, raised us both uh, from the time I was eight till 14. And it was amazing to have that whole thing go. And it was amazing because what happened is I ended up putting myself in a, pos in, a in a position where I could able to grow myself. And Howard taught me a lot, Josh, about hard work, dedication, being on top, being someone that used football, but to get an education. So I ended up, you know, playing football. I enjoyed it greatly. And I, I, what happened is I ended up my last year before I graduated. Uh, people said, Mark, you're on the draft board. You're looking like you're going to get drafted potentially. So I went to my brother, who at the time was in his seventh year. My brother played a total of 12 years for the Baltimore Ravens. He's actually a first ballot Hall of Famer, top 100 football players of all time. And I asked him, you know, what do you think? And he said, Marcus, mm -hmm. give it your all. Work hard for one year. See what happens. And yeah. I did that. And I got drafted in 2003 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Jack Del Rio, who's now the – D coordinator and the interim head coach for the Washington football team. Uh, Jack is an amazing person, great guy. He was an NFL player himself with the Minnesota Vikings. He was a middle linebacker, great player. But really and truly, Josh, I played almost six seasons. The NFL was great. A lot of great friends, a lot of great experiences. Yeah. But a lot of things I'm doing in my life today as a speaker and a coach, I learned a lot from some great coaches, some great mentors, some great leaders to help me become who I am today as a person. Yeah. So, you know, as you're kind of getting on that sixth season, then um, what are you thinking in terms of like, you know, your next play? Like, how do you, where do you go? What's your, what's your plan? Because, you know, obviously you're not going to be in the NFL in your forties. I love it, man. And honestly, Josh, I didn't have a plan. And I ended yeah. up having a back injury with the Tennessee Titans. I lived in Nashville. Uh, great experience, great teammates. I played with some amazing players. My head coach was Jeff Fisher uh, and just had a great time. But I had a back injury. I wasn't really ready for what I was going through. My body had gotten beat. My father had also passed away a year before that and it made it really difficult for me to continue doing a high level. And I didn't train like I should have. And I just had all types of nagging injuries. So I ended up leaving the game after almost six years. And again, Josh, I wasn't prepared. There yeah. was no plan. So for about six months, I was an alcoholic. I was depressed. I was a pain popper, you know, a, a pill popping in, um, addict with Tylenol and any type of, you know, uh, hydrocodone, hydrocodone, anything I get my hands on to really mask and bury all the pain of feeling like a failure because I left the game and I wasn't ready. And I have a degree in finance. I went to Howard University. I studied. Yeah. Everything was great, but I just wasn't ready. So unfortunately, for about six months, there was a lot of just really bad things to myself. After that, I then found a construction company because I went to an event at Morgan State uh, where we had Congressman Elijah Cummings, who passed away maybe about a year ago, uh, I think he from, from cancer, and he was an amazing individual. He spoke and he said, someone in this room is going to be the next big minority contractor if they take the chance and they take the leap of faith to go out there and do it. 
And this is before he became really popular, became a really good friend with, with, uh, with Obama and all this great stuff. But he was just one of those pioneers, one of those champion leaders who really set the stage for me when I heard him speak uh, at that event. That's when I decided to go full bore with my construction company uh, in 2008. Uh, so, okay, to keep, keep going. <laughs> All right, so I got, I, got, I got into construction, 2008, yeah. worked hard. I got mentored by a gentleman uh, who helped teach me how to do the ins and outs of the business. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I, I don't know. So you have a background in finance, so I would imagine mm -hmm. that helps you quite a bit. But otherwise, um, if you don't have a lot of industry experience, it's a lot of just OJT. <laughs> right, and so as, as I went to a construction course during my yeah. NFL career. And oh, okay. Oh, 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 right. Okay. To learn. But again, it really did teach me a whole lot. So it taught me a lot about development, all that, but not actually about concrete work. That's what we were with concrete contractors. Concrete work. Then eventually we got into dirt work, which was like moving the earth and stone mm. and trucking and utilities, all that. So I learned from my mentor who actually went out of business uh, in 2009. So at that time, 09 hit all the work that he was doing because he went out of business, they were missing a minority contractor, it came to us. So we grew rapidly. I mean, no. we became an eight figure business, Josh, in under Ooh. four years. Wow. Eight figures a year. And I was the largest African American minority subcontractor in the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland for two years in site work. We were almost a $15 million a year organization. And what happened was, Josh, I used great tactics I learned from people like Bill Belichick, who I met in my career, um, mm. you know, throughout my NFL career and beforehand through my brother, uh, people like Jack Del Rio, Brian Billick. And I took all that knowledge and I applied it. And I was very, I was very, uh, I was humble. And but more importantly, I was eager to listen to my team. And I built a very strong team and I let them do their work. But unfortunately, Josh, as the company started getting even more success, more notoriety, and, what, and, I, and I think the turning point for me becoming a really arrogant boss was when we won the Minority Contract of the Year Award for the state of Maryland. Yeah. When we won that, I literally thought at that time, whatever I did was right. No one could tell me anything different. I couldn't be told I was wrong. I was always gonna be the one with the final say. If you weren't my business partner, I didn't wanna hear from you. And because of that negative, toxic behavior, it, over time, a short amount of time, my employees picked up on that, which mm. equals what, Josh? The culture. One of my best team members said, Marcus, if we don't fix this, we're gonna be out of business. And I said, what do you mean? We've got a big bank line of credit, we're rolling, we got everything we need, we're straight. I said, Colin, go home, man. It's Friday, enjoy the weekends, go see your family. He came in that following Monday, Josh. He handed me his two-week resignation papers. Wow. And six months later, like he predicted, we are bankrupt. What happened is I spent about two and a half to three million dollars of my money in less than 90 days on a project where I was working for a client who I had worked for in the past and I had trusted. And I tell everybody, all of my clients when I be speaking, everything, do not take a deal and make it seem like that deal is going to continue to move over into other deals. Every job stands alone. Get a contract, mm. protect yourself, and be very leery and be aware. And that's what happened to me, unfortunately. I trusted the contractor. I believed that they were gonna take care of me. I did extra change order work that I shook their hand on. I didn't get a signed contract because I'm like, well, I was behind the eight ball. The project was stalled. I was getting a lot of pressure from other contractors, non-minority contractors, minority contractors, developer. And it was just absolutely every single day, Josh, was get it done, Katie, get it done, Katie. And so we did. And we did all the work. And it was about two and a half million dollars of work because yeah. it was a wage scale job. It was a big job for Johns Hopkins Hospital. It's their big health laboratory, big hole. And the problem was the site wouldn't dry. So we needed extra sumps and stone and trucking and labor. I was spending about $100,000 a week on payroll. So I turned around after about 90 days, bam, you know, I went to the contractor. Hey guys, we're finished. We're fin it's finally dry. I gave them all my, my work, all the paperwork, all the, yeah. all the change on the work. They said, Marcus, phenomenal job. 
but you don't have a signed contract and we shook your hand, but it's not going to really stand. So we're going to deny your change order. Thank you very much for all your hard work. I went to the bank and I tried to get my line extended, try to get some people to come in to save us. Yeah. We were close to getting it saved by a couple of very well off individuals, but it just didn't pan out at the final hour. The bank made the decision to shut our line off to repo all the equipment. Uh, and that was in that was January of 2013. By February, all the doors were shut. People were, were stealing. I couldn't pay my employees. I couldn't pay uh, payroll. People were stealing laptops from the office, trucks from the from the yard, vandalizing mm -hmm. everything. And I was just going through. A, that's why my first book, Josh, is called Sleepless Nights. That yeah. was my first book, and that's what I lived through. And I had the worst experiences you could ever imagine. And March of 2013, I said, I'm done. I'm finished. I can't. I, I just can't. And so I made some arrangements and I ended up moving the following month, April, down to Raleigh. And I left the business. I left the office. I left everything behind. And I got down to Raleigh after I paid the security deposit and first month's rent, Josh, and the moving cost, everything else, just to, just to get here. I looked in the bank, $400 left. Mm, man. That's it. That's all I had. Wow. So as much as I want to ask you, like, how can that person get away with that? Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Oh, good question. So, no, I couldn't get away with it because what happened is people tried to sue me. I had to file a bankruptcy. No, not you, but the other person that kind of sounded like oh. they, they ripped oh, you oh, off, they oh. robbed you. Oh, they ripped me off. Absolutely, they did. But but here's the thing, Josh. Like there wasn't a signed contract, Oof. so to them, they made it seem it didn't exist. And again, that's why I tell my clients: like when you do something, stop, slow down, and think things through. I looked at my business, Josh, as a person, as a human being, as my baby. Yeah. It wasn't. It was a piece of paper, and I should have yeah. walked away after I put twenty percent of my money in. If they weren't going to pay me, I should just say, you know what? I'm down 400000 whatever. Give me my two point, give me my two point one million. I was, I was to go off and I'll be done. That's what I should have did. But I trusted them and I was, I was paying people and I was really trying to do the right thing on the project and finish my work and be a great contractor. And I said, oh man, they, 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 I'm their minority contractor. They're going to take care of me. They're not going to mm. take, take advantage of me. Yep, they sure did. And I had to learn the hard way that business is business. I learned the hard way. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> all right, share the rest of the story. Cause I, I know oh, no. you man, the, the lives that you've impacted today. Uh, yeah. Where, where do you go from $400 in the bank? Awesome question. So I got down here to Raleigh, right? I was so broke, right? Josh, I couldn't even file. I couldn't even file my chapter seven bankruptcy. I was so broke. So I retained someone, gave him a hundred dollar deposit down $300. I had a job at Merrill Lynch, the NFL helped me get that. And the problem was I was not gonna get paid until I was that, until, uh, until in June, because they had to they only do once a, once a month pay on a pay cycle and I had missed it. So I couldn't get anything till, until June. So what happens is the NFL steps in through the Gene Upshaw Trust Fund and they pay four months of my bill, my rent, um, you know, every, they pay all the stuff, and, all this stuff, medical, all that stuff, right? Because they say, hey, we're going to give you an opportunity. But here's the thing, Josh, when I got here, right, I had $400, home up in Baltimore, foreclosed on. Both mm -hmm. cars were repossessed, Josh, in the same day. Ah. I got to Raleigh, three days later, repo man came, got one car, came, got the other car. Yeah. We had to get all, we, and then when the NFL stepped in, we were able to get one car. That's all we were able to yeah. get. I was working <laughs> at Merrill Lynch, working my tail off, I would drop my wife off at work, then go to work and come back and pick her up. It was just absolutely, you know, a lifestyle that I will never forget because I never want to get back there. And yeah. I remember I got fired from Merrill Lynch after about two months because I wasn't doing one of the practice tests, all my fault. Got a job the next day, Joshua Construction Company, got fired five days later, mm -hmm. two times in the same week. They shut down the park division of that construction company. I lost my job. So the only thing I could do, Josh, I was doing some football training to the youth. I knew football. Mm -hmm. I knew how to sell a few things there. was doing that. 
and I ended up taking a job. One of my uh, clients, uh, mom, owned a custodian business. She said, hey, yeah. Marcus, I'm looking for help for custodian business. I said, okay, sure, what are you paying? He said, we're paying $8 an hour. The problem was, Josh, I was running out of money. I had about yeah. five or six grand at that time saved away from hard work because the NFL was paying my bills. But that was only like a month and a half of bills. That's it. So I said, I need more money. I need more money. I got to do something. So I said, hey, uh, is there like a background check? You have to go through this whole process. He said, no, they can start on Monday. I said, you got your new hire. She said, Marcus, what? Yeah, yeah I need the job. I need to make yeah. money. I need yeah. it. And she said, okay, Marcus, the best I can pay you, $8.25 an hour. Mm. Do you want it? Yes or no? I yeah. said, sold. Start that start in September. And I worked from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. on the night shift, graveyard shift as a custodian, vacuuming floors, spraying pledge on tables, taking out people's trash. In the mornings as I was great, you know, finishing my shift up, I would say, say hi to people, good morning, have a good day, they're going to the gym, or whatever they were doing. No one spoke to me. No one said anything to me. They would tell me, get out of the way, don't speak to me, you know, just do your job. You know, it was just, I was treated like I was a less than human. I'll never forget that. And I had a pivotal moment, Josh, where somebody's trash it was about 4.30 in the morning. I was trying to wrap my ship up a little bit early, get to the gym and get back home and like start working on some more stuff for football. That's what it was for me. I ended up getting someone's trash, rotten banana huh. peel, spoiled milk, everything you could think of horrible protruding smell, Josh, over my skin, my body, oh, yeah. my clothes, as I was throwing out the trash as I did every day on my ship because there was a rip on the front side of the bag that I didn't see. So I ended up putting the trash away, cleaning myself up, going to the curb, putting my head in my hand, starting to cry and said, what has happened to your life, Marcus? Mm. And I realized, Josh, no accountability, no ownership. I always blamed other people for my faults, my contractor that I work for, the developer, my partner, my employees. Nobody made me do that extra work, Josh, yeah. other than me. I trusted someone, I took a gamble and I lost, mm. plain and simple. Yeah. So at that moment, I came home that day, sat in my chair after I took my shower, of course. And I yeah. said, what three things are you good at? Marcus, I'm good at communication. I'm good at storytelling and I'm good at helping people. I want to help people, especially NFL athletes, mm. not make my mistake. Yeah. So I started speaking. I worked off two and a half years, not one paid job, not one. Mm -hmm. Zero. I was working as a football trainer. I ran set on seven leagues. I did a bunch of free jobs, but no paid jobs. Got my first paid job in April 2016 for Miller Mott College in Wilmington, North Carolina. Did the job. I got a reference letter. I did a corporate job for a client. I bombed that job. I got great feedback. Did a job for that same corporate client, NetApp. Got great responses. And then from there, I haven't looked back. I worked for 17 Fortune 500 clients. I worked for 10 of those 17 or Fortune 100, uh, New York Life, MetLife, Liberty Mutual Insurance, uh, you know, Axe Advisor, JP Morgan, Chase the Home Depot, mm -hmm. you know, Siemens, Cisco, all these big brands. And I do, I've written now two books, Sleepless Nights, this is my best selling autobiography, and The Success Cycle, which is a bestseller about three keys to help you build your best life, no matter what you want to do with your life. I do executive coaching now, group coaching, consulting, and I'm about to build, Josh, uh, it's called the Mindset Funnel. We're working with a group out of Las Vegas that the gentleman has, is, is a top, top guy in the internet marketing, funnel building space. We're actually, I just made my payment today. We're building it. It'll go live in the next 60 days, uh, sure. by November 1st. And what it is, is we're automating the business, Josh, because here's the I'm one person. And we need to create an automation for me. We have a lot of products that are out there in the market, but we're trying now to streamline them and give you a great free webinar and it'll lead you up the track. And at the end, if you, at the end, if you want to buy the product to help you develop that super strong mindset to go from where I was seven and a half years ago, bankrupt, broke, almost homeless, seven years ago, making eight twenty-five an hour to where I am today as a national, international keynote speaker, author, coach, you know, you know, father, all that kind of stuff, husband, and learn the things that I had to do to strengthen my mindset to get out of that, Josh, because a lot yeah. of times people get into that mindset, that negative mindset, lost it all, both home, home gone, cars gone, no money, no friends, no credit. A lot of people, Josh, unfortunately, they can't get back up. Yeah. So this is designed to help people with that.
you know, it sounds like one of the key things that, that, that you speak on is to, you know, especially I think if you're dealing with someone who's come from the NFL, like it's, it's easy to come with a little bit of ego. Uh, you know, if you've been celebrated for years and, you know, you're kind of put on a little bit of a pedestal, you come out, you feel bulletproof. Uh, and, you know, then if you, you know, I think the same thing applies to, to founder CEOs that rise through the ranks and they're doing really great business, like it, it's not difficult to let your ego get in the way, especially again, when you're getting praise from, you know, people like, oh, you're so great, you're so successful, but that ego, man, how do you, you know, I, could you share just a little bit on that? Absolutely. So that's exactly what put me under, Josh, is yeah. I developed that ego with Caden. We won that award. We were getting all the praise and notoriety. We love you, Marcus. Great job. You're hiring ex-offenders, Marcus. You're doing things in the community, Marcus. You're going to be the next mayor of Baltimore, Marcus, and you're being funny. I'm like, man, oh, this is awesome. I, and, and my head blew up. Yeah. I had no mentor. I had, because my mentor went out of business. I had, my father was gone. My brother was doing his own thing in Vegas. So I had no one close to me to actually help me stay grounded. And I took my off the ball and I, I shunned Josh, one of my best, best employees. Yeah. And he resigned and then six months later, I'm out. So in today's business, I have a core team that I work with. We have a business partner who helps with content creation. I have a great videographer. I have a great website designer. I have a great mm -hmm. team in my internet marketing person. And what happens is we always, always have an open door policy. We always are honest with each other. We respect each other. And yeah. I'll never, ever get to that point where my ego takes over because I've yeah. been there and I know what it does. It took me five and a half years, Josh, to build that business. I lost it all. 90 days. Yep. Yep. Don't let your ego get in the way, man. It'll get, it can kill you. So man, Marcus, great lesson for today. And again, your website is marcusogden.com. And that's uh, the French spelling, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S Ogden, O-G-D-E-N.com. And that's where you'll find everything, Marcus, that, that you were referencing earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. Anything else that folks should know before we uh, call it a day? No, I think the important thing, Josh, is you're doing a great job of helping entrepreneurs, helping people in general, just learn, you know, that just because you have success doesn't mean you can keep success if right. you take your eye off the ball. And I tell you about all the time, this is something I want people to really remember. Don't get mesmerized by your early success. Yeah. That's what happened to me with my construction company. That's what happened to me in the NFL. And again, NFL, I just got older, my body broke down, that's what it is. But in my construction business, right, Josh, if I just would have kept my eye on the ball and been an active listener, been someone that would encourage inclusion, been someone that would have been a real good at you know, and having an open door policy, I wouldn't be here. But again, life happens, happened to me, I learned from it. This is my passion, this is what I love doing. And I love, love, love helping people who want to be great understand what it takes to be great. And once you get to that level, how to stay at that level. So again, thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed it. And I hope people could get some knowledge from this and they can learn how to really take, and I also say in my book, we talk about three things, ambition, creating your roadmap, drive, being inspired or motivated, and hard work, focus on yourself, not the competition. If you do those three things, and we talk about that in the success cycle, you can have success in whatever your heart desires. Sounds great. The books are The Success Cycle and Sleepless Nights. Marcus Ogden, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, sir. 